So anyway, this mad scientist colleague of mine crossed a pirate cutlass with a chainsaw. You know what he got? Me neither, but here it is, right here. It's one of these, you see. The trouble was he couldn't think of a pun for it. So maybe that'll be your homework for tonight. Think of a good uh, pun name for the... Anyway, welcome to the Mask Fan Attic, Mask Fanatics. Tonight's mask... Well, now usually these masks uh, are, are things that I tell you, oh, look on eBay or look online or ask your, uh, your local costume shop. You may be able to find one. Tonight, that's probably not the case. You're probably not going to really find one for yourself. However, it's such a weird and interesting mask that I thought you might enjoy a look at it anyway. It's, it's a little something from Eric Shearer, S-C-H-E-R-E-R, -E -R, better known online as Maskatron. And by the way, look him up on Facebook. I think... I think he's Maskatron Tron on Facebook. Maskatron only instead of an A in the middle, I think it's an E in the middle. I think it's Mask E Tron Tron. That may have changed by the time you watch this video. That's just between you and me. This this information is free, okay? Um, where was I? Ah, yes. Tonight's mask. A little something from Eric Scherer, the Maskatron, called the Brainiac. Now, you know, uh, today the word brainiac occasionally turns up. It's a, it's a fairly popular uh, slang term that kids use for really smart kids. Like uh, uh, the kid that gets all straight A's in school, you know. Uh, oh, he's a brainiac. That, that's a word that they use in that, uh, in that sense. But back in 1961, no, the word wasn't common at all when it was used to mean brain-eating maniac for the movie The Brainiac. And this is just like, looks just like rather, what the Brainiac in the movie The Brainiac looked like, believe it or eat it. And as you can see, he's kind of a, well, he's kind of a devil. He kind of looks like a devil from some strange old um, centuries old woodcut or something, but with this very weirdly shaped, deformed, swollen head and the strangest teeth and tongue combination uh, you'll probably see all afternoon. And uh, yeah, there he is now, the Brainiac here. In the film, uh, he's actually Dr. Uh, not Dr. Baron Vitalius. Baron Otto Vitalius. I guess that makes him Baron of Brains. I know some people who are Baron of Brains. Anyway, uh, back to the story. Yeah, he's, he's this uh, a warlock, an evil sorcerer who practices, you know, black magic, witchcraft, and uh, he is put to death in uh, 1691, I think, and then uh, in, in 19, 1661, let me get that right, 1661, he's put to death, 300 years later, 1961, a meteor falls to earth, and it couldn't look any more like a big silly hunk of uh, paper mache, and it uh, just plunks down somewhere, and the meteor turns into this, and that's him you're thinking that I was like dozing off or, or maybe drunk or something. No, no, you watch the film. That's what happens. He comes out of a meteor, or the meteor turns into him uh, to be more uh, more descriptive about it. it. It literally becomes, you have to see it to believe it, and even then you won't believe it. But anyway, uh, this is the thing that he is, and it's probably the oldest movie I've seen to use something like a bladder effect, which became uh, common in the 1980s which is uh, where something was being inflated repeatedly like a balloon and, and like throbbing and pulsing. Well, he has this big inflatable throbbing head, which may have just been a result of the actor in the mask having a hard time breathing and going <laughs> and the head would, but it looked kind of cool and they left it in the film. Um, maybe that was all that, that was, but the big inflatable head was scary if you're a little kid and you were seeing this on late night television, you know? But the Brainiac here, as reconstructed many years later by Eric Shearer, has the accurate uh, uh, bloated, swollen head and the beady eyes and the strange uh, devil-like pointy nose and the insane, insane tongue. And now, the, why is he the Brainiac, by the way? Is it because he was smarter than everybody else and he was a big brain? And does this head uh, reflect the presence of a big brain uh, housed within? Not really. He was the Brainiac because he ate brains, you see. And he would eat brains by, by sticking this big tongue out and like gouging you in the back of the neck with it and sucking your brain matter out. And actually, even though he was only in uh, one movie, if you watch modern day television, you get the impression 
he has caught up with a lot of people over the years because there are a lot of people on television and producing and creating television who seem to have had their brains sucked out. And yes, he did have uh, what appears to be eyelashes. Okay, now at the beginning of this segment, if you can remember back that far, I said you probably weren't going to find one of these. That's because only three were ever made, and I think that's one of the great tragedies of the modern age. Only three of these were made. I don't know why, uh, but uh, after three, the mold uh, went to that big mask studio in the sky. Let's observe a moment of silence. That's enough. But only three of these exist. One bought my, by me. Another one bought by me. I could have just saved uh, time there and said two bought by me, couldn't I? But I didn't. One bought by me and kept, and this is mine. And uh, another one bought by me as a gift for a friend of mine. And I don't know who has the third one. Is it you? Could be. But uh, maybe somebody will do another Brainiac someday. And and as uh, as a uh, as an addendum to this. Uh, you know, I like to build full figures of monsters sometimes, and I thought, well, you never know when I wanted. So, you can't find uh, official Brainiac hands. So, here's here's what I bought. I'm not proud of this. Here's what I bought by way of hands for him. That's right, lobster claws. And right now, those of you who are not familiar with the Brainiac are going, what is wrong with him now? Um, but but no, if you watch the movie. For some reason, this demonic entity with the forked tongue has pinchers, and when he's standing there out in the foggy, misty moors in the moonlight with his head throbbing, uh, he's going like this, too, with these pincher hands. And now, yes, these are too red for him. These are Archie McPhee, one of my favorite mail order uh, companies, by the way. These are Archie McPhee brand lobster claws. And, uh, well, if you have a mask of Zoidberg from Futurama, or if you just happen to look a lot like uh, Zoidberg from Futurama, you'd be all set with these. Uh, and, and really, you know, even if you're not a Brainiac or a Zoidberg, you should probably get yourself a pair of these if you have a lot of masks, because there are a lot of uh, weird aliens and bug creatures with which these would be good hands to, to you know, pair them up with a, a head, but you would have to repaint them for the most part. But imagine if these were black, or if they were like a shiny green color or lots of different colors depending on the the mask in question. Now if I was actually going to use these with him like I intended uh, obviously I would need to spray airbrush a little bit of this orangey rust brown kind of reddish brown on there to take down the redness somewhat so he doesn't look like a boiled uh, lobster but this is kind of close to what his hands look like and if you were going to be a Brainiac, this particular Brainiac, these would pretty much uh, do the trick for you. And yeah, Archie McPhee, <clears throat> Archie McPhee, lobster claw, pincher hands. That's all I have to say about Brainiac. See you again next time if I haven't melted into a little puddle of slime from the heat up here in the attic.